The new Netflix documentary, Our Father, is a messed up story of deceit and assault. But is it going to be worthy of your time? Jacoba Ballard was an only child, conceived via donor sperm, who always dreamed of having a brother or sister. An at-home DNA test led her to the discovery of not one, but seven half-siblings. As the group set out to learn more about their curious family tree, they soon discovered the sickening truth. Their parents' fertility doctor had been inseminating his patients with his own sperm, without their knowledge or consent. This is a horrifying look at what could go wrong when a fertility specialist puts his own views and priorities above those of his patients. This is also very timely as a parallel to what's potentially going on with the Supreme Court and women's rights within the United States. Now, the storytelling is engaging and has almost a thriller aspect to it as the facts begin to be uncovered in this mystery. And if it weren't for Jacoba's curiosity about why she looked so different from her parents, who knows how long it would have taken to uncover the truth? It's scary to think about how prolific Dr. Donald Klein was in using his own sperm, especially in such a concentrated geographical area. We're told that when sperm donors are used, they're limited to two to four times of usage, so as not to create too many instances with their DNA in a location, which could lead to unknowing half-siblings getting together and procreating. And while that's probably a very minuscule possibility, the more times a donor is used, the higher the probability is, which is what we then see happen in this account. The interviews are compelling and even heartbreaking, and some are shocking as well. Especially when we get to see who all of the victims were, because not every one of them was just some random stranger, but some in fact had connections with the doctor. It's really a grotesque thought when everything comes to light about what Klein perpetrated. The interviews are also filmed wonderfully, and in some instances where some reenactments are used, they don't feel cheesy. They're acted well, and they're mainly there just to show actions that reinforce what was being said by the interviewees. The way the story is pieced together is cohesive, and the story is made all the more convincing based on the sheer number of interviews that the filmmakers were able to secure. Because there's also the dogged investigation from a TV journalist who was turned on to the story by Jacoba, facts are able to be uncovered more broadly, which then allows for more potential victims to become aware. And there were two areas that shocked me the most in this. One was that the doctor would blatantly negate the wishes of his parents. I mean, in ways that were even more unexpected than I could have imagined. And when I heard some of these accounts, I mean, my jaw was just hanging open in disbelief at the audacity and the hubris of the doctor. The second area, which is equally as troubling, is how the laws weren't able to address these types of crimes against the women. The doctor assaulted these women. And the more we learn of his behavior, the more horrifying his actions are. While the lawyers can attest that what happened was reprehensible, there was not a statute on the books that addressed what Klein did, even though some of the people are making a very strong case for classifying his actions as sexual assault and even rape as defined by the law, which is then what would be necessary to prosecute. And as shocking as how little help the legal system was in this, it's equally troubling that the medical board didn't step in to remove his license and ban him from ever practicing anywhere ever again. Now, I'm not a doctor, and I don't play one on TV, but common sense tells me that what Klein did violated some sort of medical oath or principle. And it's apparent in the sheer number of children that share half his DNA, especially when the mothers clearly did not know that he was the donor. While this documentary goes into some of the background and beliefs that the doctor held, which then shaped his motivations and behaviors, I would have loved a more deep dive into those beliefs. I mean, how widespread is this mindset? I know that some reality TV names with large families kind of share his beliefs, at least peripherally, but I would have enjoyed a whole section of this story devoted to this. What we get touches on it, but not in depth in a way that could provide more insight into his psyche. Some of the interviews with Klein's co-workers do help to shed light on his personality and how vindictive and cold he could be, especially if he felt that he was being crossed. These then work to reinforce the notion of his massive ego, and probably even narcissism, because what other kind of person would be so smug and self-confident to continuously use their own sperm to inseminate patients? It's also sickening to hear a recording of Klein playing the victim card to one of the children. I mean, he feels zero remorse for his actions, only being concerned for his own reputation should the news come out. That dude needs to have his junk cut off immediately and then force-fed to him. Now, I love that this is a contained documentary film and not some series that's drawn out unnecessarily. And while I could have used a little more info, the runtime was efficient and it didn't drag. It seems also that just about every couple of minutes, more unnerving or shocking info was being unveiled. And this kept me riveted and then disgusted all at the same time. Every so often, the screen would show an increasing number of siblings that were being discovered. And as the doc went along, I kept shaking my head in shock at that growing number. 
I'm curious at how many other times something like this has happened in the past with different doctors. I mean, with the advent of companies like 23andMe and Ancestry.com, home DNA kits are now commonplace and allow for easier identification of potential relatives. And the doc shows how crazy the discovery becomes, and because of the intimacy of the interviews, they become heartbreaking to watch. And this just isn't limited to the children, but the entire family. Imagine that you have a kid that you've raised only to find out that they're not your biological kid. It's got to be confusing emotionally because the love that you have for the child doesn't go away or change. At least I hope it wouldn't. But there's still the feeling of violation and even loss at the knowledge. And it also means that the children could have unknown health issues or even challenges since their true familial health history, it's just not based on who they believed it was. So overall, Our Father is a compelling look at a serial sexual assaulter. The 97-minute documentary makes good use of its time by laying out the story through compelling and informative interviews. The storytelling is cohesive and it's convincing. And even when there are reenactments, they look great and they work to reinforce the horrifying truth that's being unveiled before us. I would have liked to have some more time spent on Klein's motivations and mindset, but the info that we do get is enough to form a good picture of him. The story is ultimately sad and very upsetting, but a necessary discussion to hopefully prevent something like this from happening anywhere else. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and a lot of violence in the description of the numerous sexual assaults that were perpetrated by the doctor. I highly recommend checking out Our Father. Now, it may piss you off, but it'll amaze you in the process. What's a good documentary you've seen recently? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.